Oh, back in my day, sound cards were tremendously important to drive good audio. Never thought I'd see the day. It seems like they're making a comeback. Ah, good people. So sound cards, maybe more important now than you think. And I've been a huge supporter of onboard audio because motherboards have gotten such fantastic output over the last few years. But with our conversation with Sound Blaster, we've gotten a really interesting insight into development of something like the A7 and the A9 and why they matter in the market today. Ooh. Ooh. Ah, there we go. This is the Excel I'm looking for. Welcome the O11 Excel by Lee and Lee, stepping it up with upgrades all around for enthusiast builds with perfect radiator spacing in the bottom on the side and the top, with now a slightly wider main chamber for taller GPUs and rear exhaust area. The second chamber will hide all your cables and house hot swappable drives for a complete package all around. This is the O11 Excel by Lee and Lee, giving you room to grow. And so price-wise, both sound cards are pretty competitive. They're still on the high end and like the premium territory, but they do compete with external DAC and amplifier solutions like the GSX-1000 from Sennheiser or the Element from JDS Labs is what I've been using to drive my headphones. It's a fantastic piece of audio hardware, but now with A9 that gives me additional uh, microphone inputs, it might be replacing the element. So in terms of hardware specifications, this is kind of the best it gets with an insane resolution support. It's kind of like raw for your audio in terms of what this thing can drive with up to 600 ohms of headphone impedance. This thing is supposed to be like the pinnacle product from Sound Blaster and kind of like a love letter to their fans because of all of the hardware, but also because of the breakout box. So you don't have to fiddle with cables at the back of the sound card and have this hub instead with all the IO on your desk. The most interesting thing for me is that XLR input with 48 volt phantom power and that's important because condenser microphones require active voltage supplied in order to function properly which is why it's excellent for streamers to get broadcast quality sound. That is what you don't normally find on like external DACs or amps especially with XLR unless you're buying a dedicated mixer into which you plug everything into. Here we also have separate 3.5 millimeter headphone and mic jacks plus the 6.3 millimeter headphone jack. We have a headphones in impedance switch that lets you select what impedance level you want depending on your headphones. We have an SBX button to enable those effects in the software so you don't necessarily need to access the software and a nice volume wheel that you can uh, press to mute. You can hold it for four seconds to disable the LEDs or hold it for two seconds to switch to the external outputs. As for the sound card itself, we have optical in and out. We have uh, front left, front right, rear, center, subwoofer channels. Plus we have that ACM link port, which is a mini HDMI cable that allows you to connect the breakout box directly into the sound card. Of course, they're using a really high quality DAC in here and op amps that are swappable if you want to uh, change up the little character of the sound. And interestingly, it requires a six pin PCI Express from the back that is needed to power the XLR because of that fan to power and actually is needed to power up the whole breakout box as well. I will say the card looks beautiful and they have eliminated RGB support like we saw on A5. And now it's just white with a yellow A9 illumination and I find that strange. So one technical advantage when using a sound card is that audio is hardware accelerated on the processor that is on the sound card and not by your CPU. Therefore, it could give you some frame rate advantage in games. In my testing in BF5 that has a really busy audio engine, it does not. It does not matter if I'm using a sound card or onboard audio, there is no frame rate difference when I'm trying to control for the CPU bottleneck. But interestingly, I've also discovered that plugging in the sound card into a different PCI lane that automatically down clocks my graphics card PCI lane to X8 does in fact hinder performance in games. And so you have to just make sure and be aware that you're plugging in the sound card into the correct lane that does not lower the speed of the PCI bus lane into which your graphics card is plugged in. 
I hope that makes sense. And as for audio delivery, I was not expecting such power, such clarity, such detail and neutrality throughout this entire experience. I feel like the op amps are not colored in any way and they drive my HD800 and my planar magnetic HE4XX with plenty of volume headroom to spare. And even when I'm approaching the really, really blasting audio, I'm still not hearing any distortion coming from the headphones or the amplifier. I am noticing a lot of like weird artifacts in the music that isn't high quality. But as soon as we play any flag files uh, with my Hans Zimmer collection, with my Queen collection, everything just like, oh, it sounds beautiful. The soundstage recreation is not artificial in any way. Nothing is being pushed forward or back to give you a sense of space. It's just the way it is. And if you wear an open set of headphones, stereo reproduction is just beautiful. Now from a pure audio perspective between the A9 and my Element amplifier, I still prefer the Element. I feel like the bass reproduction is identical on both, but but the A9 feels slightly drier on the high end and therefore to my ears, the element appears to be smoother. Of course, this can be mitigated via the driver software uh, on the creative side with an equalizer playground that adds value to the whole customization element. And I also really like the option to enable what they call direct mode that bypasses any sound effects that is applied. And this is the only way to actually enable that crazy 32 bit 384 kilohertz quality with the selection of roll off filters that to my ears really don't make a difference. The encoder setting here is useful for speaker setups via optical connection for Dolby Audio or DTS Connect. And the recording tab is only useful for mic boost and voice morphing if you're into that. And before we do the sound test, I just want to come back to the point of why sound cards may be important now. And that apparently is because of the new hardware. So the RTX 20 series apparently is introducing so much more EMI or electromagnetic interference into the whole system that it is corrupting the power rail and sending power noise into anything that is plugged into the PCI slot. And so they had to design completely new line conditioning as what they call it to filter out that power noise. So your line output and your line input are completely clean. And the crazy thing is, I remember hearing this sort of interference in game with my RTX 2080 and headphones plugged into the motherboard, where I could hear the mouse cursor movement. And I'm like, how is that possible? But now it all makes sense where the interference from the graphics card is not being shielded enough and filtered out enough by the motherboard onboard sound cards. Uh, and that is kind of where creative comes into play with their filtering algorithms applied. Uh, but now let's hear the mic test. All right, so microphone test time. What you're listening to now is a GSP 500 plugged directly into the breakout box on the AE9. This is the purest form. There's no gain on the microphone. This is just maximum volume on the microphone. I think it sounds fine. There's not too much noise and whatever you can hear in the background is not hiss. It's my system, which is just less than a meter away from me. So I'm going to be quiet so you can hear that noise floor. Not bad, not bad. The voice more functionality is actually pretty hilarious. Right now, I'm a female. Can you tell? It is probably a very weird audio slash visual experience for you. The elderly, this is the one I used in the intro. It's pretty hilarious how similar it sounds to my grandpa. <laughs> and the chipmunk. Obviously, you cannot go wrong with a chipmunk. I actually really like the robot because the voice morph automatically adds this like robotic feel to it in terms of processing. So this one fits back to normal without any voice morph, without any voice clarity. And this is disappointing because look what happens to my voice when I enable voice clarity. Right now it's enabled. We have noise cancellation at the lowest possible position and it just sounds terrible. Whatever noise it's trying to compress, it completely just destroys the vocal character of my voice without voice clarity so much better. So now I have the GTX 1070 out. RTX 2080 Ti is in the system, spewing so much EMI. And the microphone here is actually slightly more noisy versus when the 1070 was in the system, especially if I boost the um, DBA to 10. Right now, this is plus 10. The microphone volume is great, but the noise, that noise floor is still there. And this is what the microphone sounds like when it's plugged directly into the motherboard with my RTX 2080 Ti in the system. <sighs> There's a lot of digital interference happening in the background. I can actually hear some of that in the headphones themselves. Not good. This is plus 20 dBA through A9. 
and this is plus 20 dBA via my motherboard. Alright, so next we have this ENG microphone. This is what we use for shows, plugged into the XLR with phantom power enabled. It is a bit too quiet, so I have to boost the gain plus 10. Right now we have plus 10. And this is a really nice volume for this microphone. It is dynamic and it has a little bit of extra like noise in the background. Not noise on like ambient noise, but the actual digital hissing noise. If I boost it to 20 plus, you'll definitely hear it. Now I have the dynamic mic plugged in into the XLR with Phantom Power. The vocal pickup is great, but you can hear there is noise. Here's plus 20 dBA. Now we have a different microphone plugged into the XLR input with Phantom Power. This is the Blue Amber. It sounds incredible for the price point at only $100, but the main distinction is this is a condenser microphone versus what you just heard was dynamic with that ENG microphone. And condenser mics on this breakout box are incredible. No noise whatsoever, super clarity. If I stop speaking, all you'll be here is like tiny bit of ambient noise in the room. It sounds super clean, and even if I boosted plus 20 dBA, all you'll be hearing is additional fan noise and like whatever ambient room noises there is, and not digital hissing noise. This is plus 10. And this is plus 20. And so as you could probably hear by that microphone test, the noise in the microphone with the 20 series cards versus a 10 series cards is actually slightly different. It is lower on a 10 series GPU and it is pretty manageable on a 20 series GPU, but it's still noticeable, especially when you're boosting the signal of the microphone. If it's too quiet, then it's more noticeable with a 20 series GPU uh, without enabling noise reduction because that completely just distorts and destroys the vocal clarity. The more interesting thing, however, to me was the difference in audio noise with dynamic versus condenser microphones and how much more noise there was with a dynamic microphone versus a condenser. So potentially if you are streaming, a condenser is the way to go, while dynamic with a 10 series GPU sounds perfectly fine. You can still boost the gain to 10 plus without introducing too much like that background hissing sound, while with a 20 series GPU, man, you could really hear that. And I understand they're using their line conditioning and removing that power noise, but it's still not super clean as I was expecting especially for the price point. But let me know if you could actually hear the noise because audio, again, is subjective based on your ears and what headphones or sources you're using. So let me know if you could hear the difference. And as for the surround sound experience, it is built into the command software, so you can play around with it and it's actually really good. But still nothing beats the Sennheiser GSX-1000 amplifier. That thing is just like number one in surround sound and their binaural engine is so good, while Sound Blaster takes the second place. In my opinion, it still opens up the audio environment without losing detail, without losing clarity on all the important audio cues, but it doesn't feel as open or as free as the GSX-1000. And so in the end, the sound cards are important because they highlight how much EMI interference are introduced by the new hardware and what motherboard manufacturers potentially must do to eliminate that. But if Sound Blaster cannot fully eliminate that noise of the EMI interference with a microphone input, then we might have a problem. But the A9, while being expensive, is a very nice complete package in terms of audio output is fantastic and the microphone input too, that sounds great on 10 series cards, absolutely no issues, but you might uh, face a little bit of noise when a 20 series GPU or if you're using a dynamic microphone. I think I'm going to keep the A9 in my system, retire the element amp and I love the breakout box cable is long enough so I can position that on my left side, connect all my headphones to there instead of the cable having to pass on my right side across the mouse and keyboard and I feel like it's a complete product as long as you don't mind a little bit of that noise on the input side for the microphone if you are using some intense hardware.
The new Hydro X series from Corsair is a full water cooling ecosystem with transparent blocks for RGB goodness and built in flow indicators, with soft and hard tubing available and a full array of fittings so you can design the perfect loop for you. Hydro X by Corsair. Everything's linked below. All right, guys, I'm Dimitri. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know if you are using a sound card, if you've had any experience with Sound Blaster in the past, and if you are experiencing any noise via your onboard audio, potentially swap out the hardware to see if there's any dirty power uh, that's floating around somewhere in the system. And uh, yeah, maybe consider getting a sound card A7 or the A9. I'll uh, have them linked below. Thanks so much for watching. Check out this other relevant content. I'll talk to you in the next video.